الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد I collected a lot of documents and materials and statements for this video and I want to tell you about the truth of the Muslim Brotherhood and how they are it's it, it's fair to say that they are khawarij and they are the modern day khawarij and I'm not saying this because Wallahi, uh, some governments labeled them as that officially. They said they are extremist group and all that. Absolutely not. But this has been said even before them being officially labeled uh, and categorized as an extremist group. Uh, many ulama, decades ago, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, they would call them that and they would refute them and warn against them and, and call them as deviant. The Prophet wasallam told us that the Khawarij and the deviants and the poison of the khawarij are is not going to stop at any time the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in a hadith that was narrated in musnad al-imam ahmad he said whenever a group of them emerged meaning the khawarij allah will allah the almighty will cut them off and ibn umar said the messenger of allah peace and blessings be upon him repeated this 20 times or more and i was listening every uh, every time whenever a group emerges Allah will cut them off. Whenever a group emerges, Allah will cut them off. And wallahi, I will show you how Al-Ikhwan Al-Muslimin is one of the most destructive, most deviant, and poisonous group of people that has harmed not only the Ummah, but the world with their deviance. And let's start, let's start with uh, a disclaimer, first of all. People are going to say, oh, this guy's paid, this guy, you know, they paid him to, to do this and to, nobody paid me to do this. Wallahi, I will give you the statements of Ikhwal Muslim, of the founders and, and the godfathers of Ikhwal Muslimin, and you judge by yourself. You will judge by yourself. I got them from their books and their references, and uh, you be the judge, yeah? Second of all, this was my stance ages ago. This is not something new that I came up with or I changed or anything like that. This was always my stance with regards to Ikhwan al-Muslimin. And I will also share with you the narrations of the of the scholars with their regards. <coughs> but first of all, let's build the foundation as usual. What is the ruling on creating sects in Islam? Yani, Islam by itself is a sect. We are a group of people gathered on some fundamentals and principles through revelation that we have to be together and we have to يعني, not divide. Allah Azza wa Jalla in the Quran, "Wala takunu min al mushrikin min al ladina farraqu dinahum wa kanu shi'an kullu hizb bima ladayhim farihun." Be not not of the mushrikin or part of the mushrikin or like the mushrikin, the polytheists, the idolaters, the the disbelievers in the oneness of Allah, of those who split up their religion and divided, yeah, and became sects, sub sects. And, and followed their vain desire. Each sect are happy with what they call for. Allah Azza wa Jal Amarana ordered us to be together, to be one hand, one group, one sect. And hold fast all of you together to the rope of Allah. Meaning here it says, i.e. this Quran. This Quran and the Sunnah and the explanation of the of the pious uh, predecessors. This is this is what we have to hold on to. If you hold on to the Quran, people will come. Uh, divide, misinterpret the Quran. So we have to hold on to the Quran and the interpretation, the correct interpretation of the Quran and do not be divided among yourselves. By, uh, now, so we know this, that in Islam we have to, we cannot be sects. We cannot be sects. <clears throat> Let's listen, listen to Sheikh Al-Fawzan when he was asked about the ruling of uh, relying or being part of a sect and creating sects in Islam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya Shaykh, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kullu hizbin bima ladayhim farihun hal huwa ala sabiil al-dham am annahu yajuz am annahu yajuz al-tahazzub wa insha' al-ahzab he said, Allah Azza wa Jal said every sect are happy with what they call for the ayah that I mentioned. He said, is this Allah is praising them. Is this a good thing or is it not allowed to create sects in Islam? This is the question that was directed to Sheikh Al Fawzan Hafidhullah. Shukran. Ya Akhi Allah Amarana bil ijtima' ala ta'ati subhanahu wa ta'ala wa anna kun ummatan wahida 
إن هذه أمتكم أمة واحدة وأنا ربكم فاعبدون uh, uh, The Sheikh may Allah preserve him said Allah ordered us to be together, unite together on the obedience of Allah and he said this is an ummah that is one and you worship Allah as one ونهانا عن التفرق لا تكون كالذين تفرقوا واختلفوا من بعد ما جاءهم البينات وأولئك لهم عذاب عظيم ولا تنازعوا فتفشلوا تذهب ريحكم واصبروا إن الله مع الصابرين And here he mentioned a couple of ayat that he said do not uh, divide and do not be sects and do not go one against each other <coughs> and be together and be patient and Allah ordered us not to divide and not to become subsects فعلينا أن نجتمع على طاعة الله عز وجل ومن فارق الجماعة قيد شبر ما تميتة جاهلية He said we have to unite confirming this and he said anybody who leaves the jama'ah the unity of the muslimin and he dies upon that that he is divided from the muslimin then he will die a death of ignorance فعلينا أن نجتمع على طاعة الله وعلى أمة الإسلام ولا نتفرق والله جل وعلا قال واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا وأما قوله تعالى فتقطعوا أمرهم بينهم زبرا كل حزب بما لديهم فرحون هذا من باب الذم لأنهم لم يكفي أنهم تفرقوا بل كتبوا كتبا كل واحد يأيد ما هو عليه بالحجج الباطلة والترويجات الكاذبة he said this is with regards, I'll briefly say it, he, he mentioned some ayat that we have to unite together confirming this, this concept. And then he said this ayah that everybody is happy with what they call for is like Allah is, is criticizing them. This is not something that Allah is praising. But Bil-Aqs, well, Allah is criticizing, meaning that you have to refrain from that. They're calling to things that are lies and, and, and assumptions and uh, not to the truth. And that's why everybody's happy with what they call for. It's all conflicting with one another. يعتمدون على كتبهم الباطلة وأنها تخالف ما عليه الآخرون وهذا لا يجوز الله أمرنا أن أمرنا أن نتح أن نعتصم بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا نكتب كتبا من عندنا نختص بها. And we cannot I'll, I'll end this here but he said we cannot also come up with new things and say we tell people to يعني uh, restrict ourselves with what we say and what we do. And this is this is sectarianism. Is I what I say is the truth, and uh, that's it. That's the truth. Uh, not about the Quran and the Sunnah. It's that that. I am I'm the one that calls off what's right and wrong. And this is sectarianism. And he's he's uh, clearly يعني, refuting this and warning against. It. And this is not part of Islam. And by the way, this is not only Sheikh Salih al Fozan, this is like a standalone fatwa or anything. No, no. First of all, he backed up what he said with, with uh, ayat, and he backed up with what he said with, with, uh, with logic, with Quran, and all of the ulama that I know of that they warn against creating sects in Islam. This is not allowed. Okay, so the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, this happened after the the fall of the ottoman empire and uh, it was the founder was uh, hassan al-banna he was an egyptian born in 1906 and he was a teacher in a place called al ismailiya it's a place in egypt 22 year old 22 years old and he created the sect in 1928 yeah created the sect in 1928 and the purpose of the sect was this is what he has said at the beginning, he said that we want, you know, there's because back then, yani, many Muslim countries, they were really away from Islam and, you know, alcohol was spread everywhere and everything and nobody really cared about religion. And so he said, man, this is, you know, this is too much. Let's bring back two people to Islam. Let's do da'wah. We want to bring, we want to take out the Muslims from the bars to the mosques. Nice, not bad, Mr. Hassan al-Banna. That's good. It's a good. It's a good cause. Why not? May Allah reward you for that. And then, of course, he gathered some people and started calling people. Yeah, and going on the streets, telling people about Islam, talking, reminding people. Very good, mashallah. And yeah, and he, some people gathered up around him and said, yeah, and he, "We want to help you with this." So he said, "Okay, so let's you know let's let's all help each other and 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 start doing this da'wah." And uh, from there, things yeah, and he evolved and started developing. And this was really successful. People were listening to him. And he was a very articulate man. He knows how to speak. And 
he's very good with communication yeah uh, and people would listen to him and from there you know he started doing books publications conferences had to even establish like offices and centers you know? and then he called themselves he labeled them the, this group uh, we are the muslim brotherhood we unite we are brothers that unite upon islam hello hello problem no problem why but we go back to the asal the action is no problem but creating the sect is a problem why now like i said they established this for this cause and they made a qanun a law for the muslim brotherhood and this is online you can check it out they said this association does not engage in political matters of any kind nor in religious disputes we don't get involved in religious disputes we don't get involved in political matters we got nothing to do we just want simply people to pray women to wear hijab stop doing sin etc beautiful and it has no affiliation with any particular group of islam and muslims at any time or place any we don't any uh, you know uh, we don't have his partisanship in, in with anyone else it's just us calling general okay good article number three says the purpose of the association the jama'a are limited to improving the condition of muslims in their social and moral aspects of life beautiful not bad yeah i kind of like it five years later these two clauses was removed was removed from their qanun from their law and then he started saying some weird things not what he started saying and yani not at the beginning he started we've got nothing to do with politics and all that then in his majmu'at al-rasail he said i can frankly declare that a muslim's faith is not complete unless he becomes siyasiyan political re-evaluate re-evaluating the the affairs of the nation caring for it and being zealous to shadid about it every islamic association must prioritize the political affairs of its nations at the forefront of its agent agenda otherwise it itself needs to understand the true meaning of islam you don't understand islam unless you get involved into politics who in the world said that from the ulama and the scholars and the duat nobody 1920 28 when he established this was it 1928 what did i say uh, 1928 when he established this he didn't say that he said i want to just do da'wah i got nothing to do with anything then slowly things started clearing up uh, things started clearing up with what he wants the man started gathering people and started getting involved into politics and getting involved into into the the political affairs of governments and countries and rulers and at that time who was the ruler of egypt al malik farouk it was it was a monarchy it was a king so he started saying these things ooh, 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 and he re removed the clause where it says we got nothing to do with politics and then he started gathering more people and then he started talking about governments and started talking about his government and they don't know how to lead things and you don't know how to do this and do that and, and so he got involved into politics as a matter of fact he made it a priority that this jama'a it's not about da'wah it's about politics but it started as a as a cloak as a ghita covered it's a da'wah covered da'wah but inside it's political it's a political movement and a faction then this peaceful da'wah turned into extremism he said and we will he said this in his uh, al he said we will address our call our da'wah to the officials including leaders of the country and its chiefs and its ministers and its rulers its sheikhs and its representatives and its parties and we will invite them to our way not we abide to them no 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 you are invited to my way when when obey and listen when if the you have to listen and obey to the ruler even if he is an ethiopian even if he is habashi that even if he transgresses you have to obey him without of course without sin you do you you don't obey in sin but if if he's an oppressor you have to do sabr what happened La. you are invited to my way 
طيب demand that they lead this Muslim country they demand huh? not the ruler demands no I will demand on the ruler demand that they lead this Muslim country especially the leader of Islamic nations to this and then what did he say if they respond to the call and follow the path to the goal we will support them طيب if they don't huh, Hassan what will happen otherwise huh, we are at war with every leader party chief an organization that does not work to support islam islam not islam their islam their way uh, be careful they all, all their dawahs they, they call themselves and any action they do they call it islam why do they do that because if you say i don't want your way so huh? you don't want islam you're against islam and we've heard this before yeah anybody who's against the muslim brother he's against islam no, I just don't agree with your way because your way is not actually Islamic. No, this is Islam. Whether you like it or not. A'udhu Billah. But anyways, and then they said we, uh, that does not work and support Islam and does not strive to restore the rule and glory of Islam. We will declare an, an uncompromised enmity. Enmity, yani, ada, ada, you are my enemy. Until God decides between us and our people with truth and he is the best of conquerors yeah and he declared war my way or i'm gonna declare war on you well as we know there was a big revolution with the muslim brotherhood and uh, the army and the malik farooq was overthrown and then they put jamal abdel nasser and jamal abdel nasser was actually part of the muslim brotherhood but what did he do he used them to take rulership and then what did he do he said who are you guys no, no, I'm not going to do this. Because they came to him. And this is this is on YouTube. You can watch it. They came to him and said, oh, okay, now you're a ruler. Yalla, now apply this and apply this and, and we have to do this and you have to do that. He said, wait, 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 wait. Who's the ruler? Me or you? Yalla, yalla, yalla. No, no, no. I got no, I got no time for this. Okay, I got, a, I got a country to run. Muslim Brotherhood. And anyways, he started arresting them and he started yani, attacking them and and it, it went sideways. I don't want to get into the details of this. There's a lot of details, Taban. But and they tried to assassinate him, and they killed the minister, Nagrashi, one of the uh, the, the minister of interior, Wazir al Wazir al They killed him. They assassinated him in his office. Yeah, and so they are. Yani, they start getting really physical, as he said. And this is all facts. I'm not like making this up. Yeah, and they killed some in the revolutions. Also, they killed many police officers, many people, many officials. Allah al Mustaan. طيب. This is with regards to a bit of history and how it started. Yeah, how it started. What is their aqidah? They say they are Muslim Brotherhood and they are calling to da'wah. صح? Let me just drink a little bit because my throat is getting sore. <laughs> What's their aqidah? What did they call for? They have no aqidah, basically. They, they don't see aqidah as a priority. They don't see the aqidah of Muslimin, La ilaha illallah, and that you worship Allah and you understand what worshiping is, and Tawheed al Uluhiyya, Tawheed al Rububiyya, Tawheed al Asma' al Sifat, al Sunnah, Usul al Iman, all this that the, the ulama historically have been talking about. They're like, no, that's too technical. We don't want that. It's a waste of time. Like, what do you want? Politics, politics. We want rulership and we'll get to that i'll explain to you what their what exactly do they think of aqeedah what is their aqeedah to them but in any case the aqeedah that we know muslims normal muslims know they don't know that and they don't agree with that and they don't like it the founder himself hassan al-banna aslan was a sufi he was the he was raised in the hisafi way the hisafi way and yani the least bid'ah that they have is they dance in mosques the least bit the least bid'ah they start dancing in mosques and all that stuff and they they believe in wahdat al wujud that Allah and the world is one. They dance in mosques, supplication to to graves, any ibadat al qubur ila akhirihi. This is al hisafi way. So he was raised within that, and he was always with them. And he mentioned in his in his diaries and his books that he would attend their meetings and their their events and all these things. طيب. And what do they think of tawheed? The names and attributes of Allah. Like I said, they don't prioritize tawheed. They think that this will divide the Muslims. Aslam. They don't talk about it because they say this is this is too technical, and many people have different aqidas and different tawheeds and different like interpretation of tawheed. So 
let's not talk about it because it's going to divide them and we don't want to divide anyone now is the chance or now is the time for recruiting recruiting just gather as quantity as much as possible of people to be part of us okay what to what to do what's their manage manage is different the approach the methodology how they understand islam طبعاً Hassan al-Banna was highly influenced by Abu Al-A'la al-Mawdudi. Abu Al-A'la al-Mawdudi, as we all know, Indian, who went to Mah Pakistan, and he created this, uh, he, he brought back the idea and the concept of pragmatism and logic, and and uh, and I, may, may, I, I said this, I, I made a whole video about, about his way and his, his philosophy in Islam, that everything is pragmatic in Islam. There's no spirituality, there's no oneness of Allah in worshipping, fulfilling Allah's you know, obligation that uh, we have to submit to Allah through through acts of worship. This is the whole purpose of our worship is that we worship Allah. He says, no, 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 this is not the worship. Worship of Allah is that you you apply the ruling of Allah in your life. Sharia law only. This is this is what Tawheed, nothing else. And they were very much influenced by that concept. And they mentioned this. Hassan al-Banna mentioned in Maududi many times. And also Sayyid Qutb, which I'll get to inshallah. He also mentioned this. That they are very much influenced by the writings of, of al-Maududi and Muhammad Abdu, who is also influenced by al-Maududi. And they have this, they call it al-Qaida al dhahabiyyah the golden rule. And Ibn Uthaymin said, لا, هذه القاعدة الخشبية وليست الذهبية. It is the wooden rule. يعني it's nonsense. They say, let's unite on what we agree on and pardon one another on what we disagree on. Allah Taban, literally, when you say it like that generally, okay, yeah, it can mean right, but they don't mean the, the branched matters, the يعني, fiqh matters that we dispute. يعني, مثلا, طولها, قبضة, no, not قبضة, uh, long. يعني, uh, Malikiya, they don't do uh, qabd in, in salah, they do that. No problem. This we can disagree on. La la, they don't talk about that. They talk about usul al Islam. Usul al Islam. Yani, your stance towards the Sahaba, takfir, uh, bid'ah, shirk, all this. They say this, we don't want to divide and let's pardon each other with this. Allah Akbar. Then what's left? What's left? Taib dalil dalik, look at their. Their members and their heads and their committees, they have, they have different parts of of sects in Islam all together united, united, in in this in this group. So this is this uh, statement is extremely problematic. What do we unite on if you don't have the usul? And their manhaj is batini. They are a batini sect. Firqa batiniya. Batiniya means what? They show something and they hide something. Batin means in, internal. Yani their internal is, out, is different than their external. You cannot, yani, they'll say something, but inside is something else. Just like the da'wah. They, we, we call for da'wah. We got nothing to do with politics. Shway, shway, shway. They became uh, a gang. Gang members with weapons and killing people and assassination. Just like the mafia. Hey, wallahi, they're worse than the mafia. So, so they have the secret agenda. They do taqiyya or tuqiyya. They, they have that. Taqiyya means what? A light you. A light your face religiously. A light you, Adi. No problem. Why? Because, wallahi, I think this lying is beneficial for me. طبعاً هذا من الضلال المبين يعني. طيب. Their da'wah and the spread of Muslim Brotherhood. After the problem that happened with, uh, with Jamal Abdel Nasser and how people started finding out like these people are no good, man. Uh, they started خلاص, closing their offices and everything and they started spreading. And actually, that was actually part of their agenda and their strategy. That they want to spread across the Muslim Ummah. All countries, they wanted to spread and have offices and all that. And the, the thing about the Muslim brother, they're very smart. Huh? They're very smart. And like I told you, they're like the mafia even worse. The mafia have branches everywhere. And the mafia, they sell uh, drugs, uh, weapons, prostitution. Things. These people don't do that. La, la, la. These people sell you religion. They sell you religion. The people, everybody loves religion. When it comes to drugs, you know, you're going to, your customers, drug addicts. The prostitution, customers, like these people. But they're going to sell you religion. And so they have been going around all Muslim nations and they are spreading, they spread everywhere. In Syria, they have one, one there back then. 
in Iraq, they had an office there, branch. In in the Gulf, they came and they built an office. In the UAE, we, we know this. We have it. It was it was in uh, in Dubai somewhere, everywhere actually in the U across the UAE. They had offices and centers and all that. And they came to the rulers and the people of authority. They said, we just, you know, we are Jam'iyyah. We are an organization. We just want to wear non profitable organization and we want to give da'wah and do some activities for social affairs things like that boy scouting uh, boy scouting is that it like yeah scouts you know being scouts uh, and and doing activities for the children and the youth and blah 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 all these things and how do they crawl up into the uh, another way into crawling up into nations and societies and countries but through academia through schools and teaching a lot of the Ikhwan and Muslim are teachers. As a matter of fact, Hassan Banna was a teacher himself. He's a, he's, a, he's a math teacher. And so they get into the country through teaching. And that's a very, very tricky and wicked way into crawling into that. Why? They target the youth. They teach the youth because this is where the brains are still fresh. They're still receiving. You can shape them how you want. Elementary, you know, high school, even in universities. This is where this is where you can recruit people, man. This is where you create soldiers, loyal soldiers. And so they went in there, and through a decade or two, they started building a generation of what? Of the ideology of Khwan al Muslimin. And they started gathering people, giving the ideas of Hassan al Banna and the concept of Khwan al Muslimin and how they interpret. Uh, Islam, as in you have to be political, you have to get into the social affairs, you have to understand these things, don't let this, only rulers, they are the ones into politics, no, we have to get involved, and if they don't do this, we're going to have to go against them, and blah, 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 all that, all these things. But their da'wah, first of all, like I said, how they crawled up into, into countries, second, they, they focus on quantity, not quality. And like their wooden statement or principle, qa'id al-khashabiyya wa laysat al-dhahabiyya, they say, pardon each other with what we differ on, but let's work on what we agree on. So just collect, collect. Rafidhi, hatta, hatta, by the way, they have, they have Rafidha. They have, uh, what's their name? Khawarij. They have Nasara. Nasara Christians, non, non-Muslims. They have it with them, working with them. They have all sects, you name them. Adi and them, that's okay for them. Yeah? And they want to increase their followers by all means possible. Whatever it takes, I will have to say they can pay money. They will pay you money. They will promote you. They will get you jobs. They will do whatever you want. But be part of the Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah? And in their da'wah, this is very, very scary, that in their da'wah, and we know da'wah, and once you study Islam properly from the scholars, we know that وسائل الدعوة توقيفية يعني, uh, da'wah, it has to be according to the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the self. You cannot come up with crazy things about da'wah and say this is da'wah. So they're not like that. They go back to the people. What do the people like? We will do. You want music? We will have Islamic music. You want shows? You want acting? Movies? Islamic movies? No problem. We will have Islamic movies. What, what, what more do you, you want? Debates? We'll do debates. What all you want? Everything we will do. Talk about aqidah, sunnah, bid'ah. La, 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 la. This don't, don't focus on that. <coughs> because if you do that, we're not going to get a lot of people. We're just going to get people who, who want the aqidah, who really are honest about Islam. No, we don't want that. So they offer what the people want. So they focus on debates. They focus on branched matters. Yani, akhlaq, adab, you know, etiquettes, manners, things like that. Sira, they focus on sira a lot. Why? Because sira... Uh, there's a lot of ghazawad, but battles in them. So they focus on that. They twist the stories to make you want politics. So they'll make you love politics. Well, qasd min sira when you talk about sira, and this is what the scholars, may Allah bless them and reward them. And I'm, I have a class in sira. They told me when you do sira classes, you teach tawheed in it first. Sira, you teach first of all tawheed, getting to know the Prophet, how he lived, how he dealt with things, and you teach them about the sunnah. Teach them about the Quran. Teach them about this is why we we talk about Sira. We don't just talk about Sira because it's a story, it's a movie, like oh, let's just watch it. It's fun. La la, this is not the way. A Sira, the Rasat is Sira is not a goal, it is a tool for you to understand your religion. And one of the main things you understand your religion is, is Tawheed. This is why we learn Sira. And they stayed away from teaching Tawheed. Notice 
any ikhwani, any Muslim brotherhood advocate, follower, ally, whatever, they don't talk about Tawheed. They don't talk about fundamental. As a matter of fact, they criticize anybody who talks about Tawheed. Yeah, these technical matters, it divides the Ummah. They always say that. And they say Tawheed divides the Muslims. So don't talk about it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And like I said, in the UAE, they were here. And we know them. And by the way, yani the UAE, the Emiratis, were Arabs, were tribes. So we all know each other. And we're not many. Compared to the expatriates, we're nothing. Back then, Hatta, we're like, I think, 900,000, 1 million. <coughs> Excuse me. So we know each other. We know them. Wallahi, wallahi. I, mean, I personally know some of them who got arrested and all that. Some of them, yaqi, they're well off. Well off. They, own, they owned malls. Yeah, and he, they were very well off. They were not like poor. And our country, alhamdulillah, it's not corrupt. You know, it's not corrupt. You is alhamdulillah. Everybody got what they want. It's a, it's a it's a country that works on rules, and and uh, yani authorities there. There's no corruption. There's no stealing. There's no nothing. I can I can safely say my parent, my my children, and my wife can go out at night, and go to their mother's house, go out, and they are safe. This is a very beautifully alhamdulillah by the grace of Allah. Then the yani, the the work, the hard work of of the rulers and the government, they kept this country safe and good. For, for people to live in. So what do you want? There's no corruption. You're well off. What do you want? No, we want the rule. I don't. We don't want people to just rule us like this. We want democracy. We want uh, elections. That's what they were saying. You can, this is all online, by the way. You can check it out. But they started talking about, about rulership, about this. We want to overthrow the rule. We want to do this. We want to do that. Na'udhu billah. Taban alhamdulillah. The authorities got to them and they... They they neutralized them in a way, took them in prison and all that, all of them. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, they are they spread everywhere. And this is my own experience in the UAE. We've seen it. We've seen it. They went also to Qatar, they went to Saudi, they went to Kuwait, they went everywhere. Yeah. And they have, like I said, established their ideology among all the countries. But one thing that they also do, philanthropy, which is of course charitable organizations. They focus so much on that. They focus on that. Why? Money. You know how much? This is, wallahi, it's better than drug dealing. You know, drug dealing is very profitable. It's haram, it's destructive, I know. But I'm just saying, it's very profitable. Charitable organizations and charity, it's much more pr profitable. And that's why you see, they focus, ikhwanis, they focus on tabarra'at. Tabarra'at. I'm not saying all tabarra'at is wrong and all of them are corrupt. No, but they have a branch. Ikhwani is always focused. They have to have a branch of philanthropy. They have to. Because that's how they make money. They make a lot of money from that. Mahmoud Abdul Halim, one of their leaders, he mentioned this in the book, Al Ikhwan al Muslimin, Ahdat Sana'at al Tariq. He said the work of Muslim Brotherhood continued to more than two years visiting mosques, collecting donations, and he admits that the money we collected for Palestine. From back then, I don't know. Now I don't know, but this is what he said. The money that we collected for Palestine, mosques, cafes, bars did not go to Palestine. The purpose of collecting was the purpose of collecting was uh, the purpose of collecting was to not to aid not to aid our Palestinian brothers. Rather, our collection of these donations was a method of influencing people. We want to oh. Palestine, all oh, this country is oppressed. Come, come, give us money. These funds were spent on activities of the Muslim Brotherhood. And the higher Arab committee was even sending larger sums of money to spend on the Muslim Brotherhood's activities in this regard. The Muslim Brotherhood, as I said, they're a sect. And uh, the imam of them, the founder, was, of course, Hassan al-Banna. Now they have a bayah, an allegiance. They have to give a bayah to 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 the leader and to the leaders of Muslim Brotherhood, or else you cannot be part of the sect. And this was influenced by what? And that's why Hassan al Banna. So it was very important that he takes that from the from Sufism. He got influenced by Sufis. He was raised as a Sufi, yeah, Hisafi. And they have bayahs. You know, these Sufis, these extreme Sufis, they have bayahs. They have to have a bayah for that for their sheikh. And this is not part of Islam. This is bid'ah. Yeah, we have bay'ah for the ruler, the ruler, the appointed ruler of your country. You have to give him bay'ah because of your your affairs in life and all that. So everything can, 
you know, be, be stable in this country. But no, they have a bay'ah for their sect. And uh, the bay'ah is a must, like I said. And they don't see any ruler today as legitimate to receive a bay'ah. They say these bay'ahs are not legitimate. And we will get to that. I'll prove to you that. <coughs> Hassan al-Banna would say in Risala Bayna Bain al-Amsi wal yawm one of his books, one of his letters, he said, listen and obey your leadership in times of ease and hardship in likeness and dislikes. For they are the symbol of your ideology and the link that connects you all. He's talking about the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. Not the leader of your Muslim rulers, the appointed ones that the Prophet wasallam told us to give bay'ah to them. And anybody who doesn't give bay'ah, then he is he will die a, a death of jahiliyyah. Yeah. The Prophet said that. <clears throat> and he said in Risalat al Ta'alim, he said the system of the call of the da'wah they are doing during the formative stage is purely Sufi. We are purely Sufi in the spiritual aspect. In the spiritual aspect, we are Sufi. And purely military, askariya, in the practical aspect. The motto of these two aspects is command and obedience without hesitation and without review and without doubt and without embarrassment. Allahu Akbar. This is, uh, this is a revelation. The Nabi, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to have without hesitation, without review, without doubt, without embarrassment. Other than that, we cannot do obedience like this. This is not a correct allegiance. Hatta the ruler of a country that you guys are bootlicking, bootlicking. This is bootlicking. Allah, this is bootlicking. This is bootlicking of Muslim brother. This is pure bootlicking as it is. I obey and listen to the ruler, but if he orders you orders, orders us to do a ma'siyah and a disobedience, then I don't obey him. We know this. We know this. So it's not blind obedience. He is saying blind obedience. Without hesitation, without review, without doubt, without embarrassment. This only is correct if it's if you do that to the Prophet ﷺ. Other than that, no way. No madhab, no imam, no sheikh, no ruler. Nobody has this privilege of uh, obeying him and giving him allegiance in that manner, in that level. So this is the allegiance of the Muslim Brotherhood. And he would take allegiance, bay'ah, from everyone. He would take allegiance from all the members there. Yeah, you have to give me bay'ah. This is how you are part of us, or else you're not part of us. But what about their wala' wa bara' the association and disassociation? And you know that this is a part of Islam, that we associate with uh, with, with the Muslims, and we associate what's, what's good, and we disassociate with what's bad, and what, what Allah Azza wa has, does not like, and tells us, to, to not associate with, we do that. This is the wala wa bara in a nutshell, yani in Islam. They associate only with the Muslim Brotherhood members, sympathizers and supporters. Al Albani, rahimahullah, was boycotted because he criticized them. Al Albani walked around with them and he got to know them. And he was with them in a part just to understand what these jama'ah because they were very prevalent in Syria. They were very active in Syria back then. But he went with them. And he started seeing all this stuff. Like, what are you guys doing? This is wrong. This is wrong. This is blah, blah, blah. He said, and he knows. So he's saying, this is not part of Islam. This is wrong. This is a bid'ah. This is blah, blah. So they like, they started boycotting. They used to come and attend his classes and promote him, and blah, blah, blah. Then they started boycotting. Why? He's criticizing them. Don't criticize us. You have to blindly follow us. Yeah? And they praise and promote, promote anyone that praises them. Wallah, inshallah, tkun ghair muslim. You're not a Muslim, they'll promote you and they'll praise you and they ignore any falsehood that you do. Ya Habibi, this guy, he's with you. He, he's doing bid'ah and shirk. He's praising Muslim Brotherhood. He's good, no problem. And anyone who criticizes them, whoever he is, <coughs> Shaykh, Alim, whoever he is, President, they'll ignore all his good and they'll start spreading rumors about him and they'll start attacking him and canceling his reputation among the people. This is how they are. Yeah, Unless, of course, they can't. Yani like Ibn Uthaymeen, Ibn Baz, <coughs> obviously nobody's going to listen to them, so they don't curse them. Between their closed uh, yani doors, and some of them some of them actually mentioned this. Al Mas'ari exposed Salman al-Aud. Salman al-Aud is one of the biggest ikhwanis out there. 
he said he said هذا بن باز هذا العمي this blind man عوذ بالله الكاو he talks about بن باز رحمه الله he said when is when when is he gonna die so we can get rid of him and rid of his his call to tawheed and call to sunnah and all that so Allah العافية and this is recorded huh al Masari he said this in an interview it's on YouTube طيب <clears throat> so this is their wala wabara wala wabara only for the for the sect for the hizb for the partisanship other than that no wala wabara for the Islam for Islam no that's not how they do it. And then comes Sayyid Qutb. Sayyid Qutb, the godfather of takfir. Sayyid Qutb is, is, is what revived the concept of takfir falsely, excommunicating Muslims in the Muslim Ummah until today. Until today, this, this false or bid'ah that he spread is still with us today and people are fighting for it, which is Tawheed al hakimiyyah Sayyid Qutb, what did he say about La ilaha illallah? Listen, La ilaha illallah. The shahada. There is no, there is no one worshiping but worth worshiping but Allah. There's no deity but Allah. What did he say? He said in Ma'alim Fit Tariq. <coughs> by the way, most of the quotations I have here from him is from Ma'alim Fit Tariq wa al Quran, the interpretation of the Quran that he means. Yeah. He said they knew that La ilaha illallah was rev was a revolution. Thawra, revolution against the earthy authority. That usurps, or that's how you say it, right? Usurps the primary, يغتصب, the primary attributes of divinity that chips away the primary attributes of divinity, a revolution against the conditions established on the basis of usurpation and a rebellion against the authorities that rule by laws not sanctioned by Allah. What? That's not what La ilaha illallah means. La ilaha illallah means. La ilaha illallah means there is nothing worth worshipping but Allah. It's about worshipping. You got nothing to do with earthly authority that's been taken away and not applied on earth. Like, what are you talking about? And then he said the most distinctive attribute, asl attribute of al uluhiya, al uluhiya, which is, of course, worshipping Allah, he said is sovereignty. Is hakimiya Allahu Akbar. Yani la ilaha illallah means what? Meaning you have to apply Allah's rule on this earth. That's it. Salah, Suyam, oneness of Allah in worship. No, only hakimiya That's what he says. This guy is eligible to, to interpret the Quran. This guy is eligible even to talk about Islam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he say about fiqh matters? He says it's a waste of time. What are you talking about fiqh? It's all a waste of time. He said in Al Islam and Mushkilat Al Hadara, he said trying to establish Islamic legislative and fiqh rulings to address the issue of a society in a humanity lives, in, a, in, in, in which humanity lives, which is not Islamic. Look what he's saying. It's not Islamic because it does not recognize Islam as its methodology and does not accept Islam to be its legislation. Such attempts attempts to establish rulings for the issues of such a society is not serious. This is Laysa Bijad. You know what he's saying? He's saying, why are you talking about fiqh when you're not even a Muslim? Don't talk about fiqh. It's, no, it's a waste of time. <coughs> you're talking about fiqh to people who don't even recognize Islam, who don't even take Islam seriously, who don't have Islam as a methodology. So talking about fiqh and teaching the fiqh is a waste of time. This is this is takfir and insulting fiqh matters. All these books are, what do we have? All these madahab, we burn them, we throw them away because Sayyid Qutb thinks we are not Muslim. No, but he means maybe other people, not Muslims. Okay, we'll see now. What did he say about, he did mass takfir. All this in the Quran. He said, time has returned to its original state as it was when this religion came to humanity with La ilaha illallah. Time has returned to its original state when this religion came to humanity with La ilaha illallah. What does he mean? Humanity has reverted. Raja'u ila ibadat al-khalq. Humanity has reverted to, wor to the worshipping of the creation, not the creator, and to the oppression of religions. And has turned away from La ilaha illallah, even though some will repeat La ilaha illallah from the minarat, even if they say it in Al, al Muaddin, says La ilaha illallah, that doesn't count. You're all 
not Muslim to, according to him. Mass takfir. Everybody's a kafir. And he said in another <clears throat> statement, he said, this society in which we live in is not Muslim. Adichie shamelessly huh? is not Muslim. And therefore, the Islamic system will not be implemented. And you don't expect Islam because they're not Muslims. How can they uh, implement Islam? What is this guy talking about? He said in another way, in another uh, statement in the Al Quran, <clears throat> he said, Muslims today do not engage in jihad. Okay, why? He said, because there are no Muslims today. Allahu Akbar. Who's a Muslim then? Only you? You and your Hizb? And then he said, Islam is a comprehensive way of life. Whoever follows it entirely is a believer. And within the religion of Allah, you have to follow it entirely. Then you're a believer. Tayyib. <clears throat> what else, Sayyid Qutub? He said, but whoever follows something else, even in one, in one ruling, in one ruling, he rejected faith and violated the divinity of Allah and exited the religion of Islam, no matter how much they proclaim to respect the creed and declare themselves as Muslim. One thing you don't apply in Islam, you're out of the folds of Islam. Is either all or not. Tayyib, I believe Islam is good and I respect the creed and I believe in the creed, but out of hawa, out of no, you're not a Muslim. This is mass takfir. I quoted only four. The Lal al Quran open at any page, you'll see takfir in every yani. He did takfir non stop in that book. The guy was a mass takfiri. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> Yusuf al Qaradawi, Yusuf al Qaradawi, one of he was he was one of the Muslim Brotherhood, and he knows he, he says this, he even teaches his, their books. He said about Sayyid Qutb, he said he was a takfiri. I have to say this, he was a takfiri. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen, listen to al Qaradawi what he says about, like I said, Qaradawi was also part of the Ikhwan al Muslimin, but he differed with Sayyid Qutb at the end of his life. Uh, at the beginning, I don't think he differed with him. But look what he said <coughs> about Sayyid Qutb. This is an interview with Salman al-Aud. And Salman al-Aud got in a very tight position. He he didn't want to use a It seemed like that. Huh? Just look at it and you'll see. He didn't want uh, yeah, any Yusuf al-Qaradawi to say such a thing because that doesn't look very nice uh, to the Muslim Brotherhood. Look what he said. <laughs> اللفظ الجاهلية هو وصف المجتمعات بالجاهلية أو شيء من هذا القبيل. Look how easy, like oh, oh I don't want to because he knows say, uh, Yusuf Al Qaradawi doesn't agree with Sayyid Qutb at that time about his takfir. So he said Yusuf Al Qaradawi was saying to Salman Al Oda, he said I had an objection on the way he described the society, and then so he cut him. He's like oh yeah, yeah. he he met he talked he he said he described him as جاهلية and all that, right? This is what he said. So now Yusuf al Qadawi is going to correct him. Takfir. 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 Salman Al-Aud is trying to find excuses. No, he's not talking as a faqih. He's talking as يعني, a, a thinker, a, a person who writes books. He doesn't mean يعني, he's trying to say that. والان هو يعني الرجل الزجل يعني التقى بي هو السن يعني انت وياه في سن م... طبعا now he changed the subject you're younger than him or you same age what does that have to do with anything what does have to do? the guy's talking about takfir talk about serious things and now you're like oh, but you guys are same age yeah is that how's the weather today it's good right yeah you want you want a tea you want you want like, what are you doing what are you doing okay. leave the guy talk <laughs> well, heck, huh? he got you in a tight position. <laughs> Let's talk about their political stance. I mean, we talked about this uh, in short, but also I want to give you some of their quotations and some of their statements. 
طبعا they don't see any religious bay'ah to any ruler today no like I said no bay'ah to anyone Al-Banna said Muslims do not currently have an imam we don't have any ruler so let us forget everything now there is no system or rulings for Muslims you're all free to do whatever you want. There is no ruling. There is no system. There is no ruler. What, why do they say that? Because they say, I'm the ruler. Yes. Muslim Brotherhood, we're the ruler. That's why they take bay'ah. That's why they do all that. And this was mentioned in Fiqafirat al-Ikhwan al-Muslimin. And <clears throat> they focus on what? Establishing the Khilafah. Sound familiar, doesn't it? Yes, it does. This is all from the Muslim Brotherhood since 1928. Nothing new, nothing new. Don't think like these people were talking about khilafah, khilafah, this, like they brought anything new. This is a the the the, the yani, a trick for the Muslim Brotherhood, from the Muslim Brotherhood. Al-Banna said, those who link their work to knowledge and worship and dhikr, remembrance, and doing good deeds without working to fulfill this duty, meaning establishing the khilafah, the state, are sinful and negligent. Yani, it is farv on every Muslim to... Establish the Khilafah. Wow. What, what do you mean? How am I going to establish a Khilafah? I cannot. La Allah nafsan illa wusaha. What kind of nonsense is that? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Khilafah to Thalathina sana. Thumma mulk. Thumma mulk. Or kama qala nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. The Prophet hadith. He said Khilafah is only 30 years and then it is a monarchy, a rulership. Alhamdulillah, we have our rulership. But he wants to remove all that. Why? He wants the rulership. He wants his Khwan Muslimin to rule. And that's why he's saying, all this what you're doing is a waste of time. This worship and knowledge and talab al-ilm and dhikr and doing good deeds. All this is wrong. Huh? Without working to fulfill this duty. If you don't work for the khilaf, طيب, how? Hassan al Allah, teach me. How? No, you have to give me bayah. Give me bayah, this is establishing khilaf. Now you are good. Now you are not sinful. Allah al-Afiyu salama This is the biggest dalal I've ever heard in my life. Al-Allama Ahmed Shakir, Al-Allama at Masr, back then, in his time, what did he tell, what did he say about them? Innahum khawarij al-qarn al-ishirin. They are the khawarij of the 20th century. He said he knew them. He was, he lived in their time. And he said, Innahum khawarij al-qarn al-ishirin. Taban, they, what do they say? Hassan al-Banna. He says, a ruler is like a hired employee. Yeah, he's not a ruler who has his respect and his standard and all that and the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All this is not applied on our rulers. No. He says, a truly Islamic government performs its duties as a servant of the nation huh, and an employee in its service. Inta ajir. You're a hired employee or ruler. Yani we hired you. Like if I hired you, what does that mean? Meaning I am the authority and you are not the authority. You have to abide by my sayings. Doesn't that sound so familiar to you? Democracy, exactly. And so, like I said, I always say this. Liberalism and Khawarij ideology, Khawarij, they go hand in hand. They both, democracy and Ikhwan muslimin and Khawarij and extremism, they all, they have the same philosophy, but the application is different. The application is different, that's it. And here you see a picture of Hassan al-Banna kissing the hand of Abdul Aziz al-Saud al when he went to Saudi and he, he told him, he's like, we want to establish a center here and blah, blah, blah. And we are Ikhwan al-Muslimin. You know what he told him? He said, oh, he's smart, rahimahullah. What did he say? He says, kulla akhwan, kulla muslimin. We don't need, yani, what is this new Ikhwan? We are all brothers and we are Muslims. <laughs> so you're not bringing anything new. We don't need you. Yani. Uh, he, was, he was smart with his, with his answer. And here, this is scary. See, see, see. This is what Hassan al-Banna said. If the government falls short, making some mistakes, whatever, falls short, then advice and guidance, advise them and guide them, give them nasiha, should be given. Then, he said, followed by removal and expulsion. Guide, uh, give them advice, they don't listen, out, yalla, get out, get out, you know, no, you're not a ruler, come on, come on, up you go, take your, pack your things, take everything, yalla, out, leave the palace or the whatever he lives in. That's what he did with the Malik Farooq. And that's what he tried to do with, with the the other guy. What's his name? Sad, not Sadat, and what not and what Sadat. And there's a Jamal Abdul Nasr. Jamal Abdul Nasr. He tried to kill him. Well, in Malik Farooq, same thing. He kicked him out. In revolution, he went. Everybody went against him, and that's what he went. That's his 
ideology, that's his political stance, that's his aqeedah, that's his manhaj. That's what Islam Muslim is founded on, on khawarij ideology. Kick people, yani, don't like it, leave. Who, who said this at the beginning? Who? Dhul Khuwaisira. Dhul Khuwaisira Tamimi, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, he said, Adil ya Muhammad, fa'inna kalam ta'adil. Be fair, O Muhammad, ala tool. Criticism, yalla. And when they, what they did to Uthman, and what they've been doing ever since, this is the khawarij. If you make a mistake, we'll take you out. Ajma' al-Muslimun, wal-ulama, wal-hadith, wal-Quran, everything says that even if a Muslim ruler is corrupt or is bad or he makes some mistakes, you have to listen and obey and be patient. Yeah, you have to listen and obey and be patient. And like I said, if he tells you to do a mistake, a sin, then don't obey that. But you still have to listen and obey in all other things and your allegiance is to him, is your bay'ah is to him. Allah Ta'ala Alam. I made a lot of videos about this, so you can. I'm not going to elaborate a lot on this. Tayyib, who supports this Muslim Brotherhood? Yani, yeah, think about it. Hassan al Banna was 22, 22 years old back then, math teacher, did publications, gathered people, uh, opened up offices, opened up branches, and activities, forums, conferences. What did you, why, how? I'm going to give you a narration of Al Muhaddith Sheikh Ahmad Shakir. He, him, he lived in their time. This is what he had to say. This could be right, this could be wrong. Allahu A'lam. But it is a very big question mark. Who is supporting the Muslim Brotherhood? Why are they so powerful? Why are they spreading like this, like wildfire everywhere? He said the movement of Sheikh Hassan al Banna and his Muslim Brotherhood, or the Muslim Brothers, turned the Islamic call. Into destructive criminal call. Da'wa ijramiya tafjiriya, or he said destructive uh, tadmiriya. And then he said, This is the punchline. He said, funded by communists and Jews. As we know with certainty, kama na'ala mudalika biliyaqeen. It kind of makes sense. Why? They don't want safety and sovereignty and and peace and, st and, and, and you know stability in Muslim countries. They'll fund people from the inside to destroy everything. Could be. I don't know, huh? This is what he said. Rahimahullah. <clears throat> the, the power that they have, by the way, even today's da'wah, even in today's da'wah, you see them, they're the, they're the ones who get all the funds, they do all the conferences, their videos, even their, like, their YouTube videos, they're always beautiful, they paid a lot of money for this. And me, me, I, sometimes I, I like, I look at these Ikhwani videos, and I say, man, this is a lot of editing. It's beautiful. And so I, I, co I contact sometimes some of these, uh, you know, video making uh, companies. I contacted them once, yeah, to understand how much does it cost to make a video in such a way. Thirty, forty thousand dirhams. That's around. I don't know how many dollars. You do the, do the math. That's a lot of money for one video. And these people are just like. You know, flowing these videos, these conferences, these events everywhere. Where are you getting all this money from, man? Huh? And their kids, some of them are young. Like, where are you getting all this money from? Allahu alam. I don't know, huh? I'm not saying confirm this. No, no, no. I'm not saying. I'm not like that. But I'm saying this is a big question mark. Who are, who else supports Muslim Brotherhood? See, I'll tell you. So I'll tell you this from Yusuf Al Qaradawi, Ummatuna Bayna Qarnay. He said this in his book, and you connect the dots. He said, <clears throat> but when he was a Khwani, like I said, he was pure Ikhwani. He said, in this era, he had a Zaman, only two states have implemented Islam. Okay. Saudi could be one of them, right? Yusuf, Qaradawi, Sheikh. The first state is the state of Imam al Khomeini, who implemented Islam in creed and worship. And law and dealings. And the second state is state of the Turabi in Sudan. What? What? Do I even have to comment about that? Yani, no comment. No comment. Why did he say that? No, no, I have to comment. <laughs> Why did he say that? Wait, let's go back. Why did he say that? Obvious of oh, their friends, their friends, they're very good friends, 
and uh, يعني the the Khomeini regime was very much intact and in contact with the Ikhwani Muslim Brotherhood and they believe that they are calling for the same thing remember Sayyid Qutb how he's talking about revolutions and overthrow and all that same thing was happening there in Iran and so they loved it they loved that revolution the overthrow of the Shah and turning you know Iran into an Islamic state and he says Islam creed worship law dealing perfect Islam this is Islam we're in Saudi when Dual Khadij, when Masr, you're Masri, you're Egyptian. No, no Islamic state. Like, no Islamic state. What does that mean? Yani, where, am I living in a non Muslim country? What else does it mean? Yani, my bay'ah to my ruler, this is fake, this is in my head, delusions. Yes. Like, if I don't have bay'ah to my ruler, I don't have to obey him. Oh. Really? Oh, yeah, you don't have to obey him. As a matter of fact, you know what? If you have some weapons and you're a bunch of people, oh, Lord, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay. You connecting the dots, guys? I'm telling you, this is firqa batiniya. They say something internally. They say something. They have something crazy going on there. Wait. Let's go. Let's go through this first. No, no, wait. Yeah. That now there are two main sects, they say. Even the ulama, some of them, they say that. They say there is Banna'ism and Qutbiyism. Al-Banna'iyya wal Qutbiyya. This is the two main sects in Ikhwan al Muslim. We understood now. I think it's very clear what Ikhwan al Muslim stands for. Khawaj. Yeah? Polit politics, overthrowing rulers. We are the sect. We are the, the best. We are the one who should rule. We give the, we take the bay'ah. We blah, 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 all that stuff. Tayyib. Al-Banna'iyya from the Ikhwan al-Muslimin, same fundamentals, but they are reformists. What is that? Tajdeed al-Khitab al-Dini. I want to refresh the concept and the approach of religion. Yeah, any freedom, or democracy, or making haram halal, music is halal, nasheed is halal, shaking hands with girls is halal, uh, all this other stuff, mixing is halal. This half hijab that we see today, all this, it's okay, no beard, no problem. Even if you're a talib, no beard, mustache, goatee, whatever you want to do, sideburns. It's cool, man, as long as you are calling for the overthrow of governments and you're talking about politics and you talk about you know some political matters that are in the ummah today, you are, you're a perfect guy. You are one of the salihin. That's the reformists. These are the Banna'is. And we see them. We see them. And I'll mention a couple of names. May Allah forgive me and make it easy. And inshallah, you will connect the dots and you'll understand what I'm trying to say. And then we got the Qutbis. The Qutbism. The traditionalists. These are what? Sharia law. Cut the hand. Chop the heads. Takfir. Jihad. Khilafa. All this stuff. Yeah. I'm not mocking these things. These things are, of course, part of uh, Sharia. Sharia law. The punishments. Um... Jihad is, of course, Islam. I even have lessons about jihad and explaining it. I'm not talking about the real understanding of jihad that we know. No, I'm talking about their false call for it. Their jihad is jihad on us, on the Muslims. That's what they want. They want to destroy us. And they, they say khilafa. What does khilafa mean? They say, yani, khalas, remove all these rulers. No need to obedience. No need. This is what they call for. But they are the traditionalists, and we find these also. And from them came out, branched a lot of other sects. However, some people think that they are two different things. They're not. They're the same thing. Just in application, they're different. The same core concept, Banna'ism and Qutbism. <clears throat> Muhammad Abdul Qadir, the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, said, what did he say? He said, some people suggest that Ustad, to him, Ustad, Sayyid Qutb, represents one school of thought, and Ustad, Hassan al-Banna, represents another. Even claiming that they are two contradictory schools. Why? Because you know they want this one calls for jihad, sharia law, and the other one calls for democracy and free mixing and music. They're contradicting, right? However, those who make such a statement, as far as I know, have not read Fidilal Quran, the shade of Quran. This is like translated literally, and the works of Sayyid Qutb, nor they had read the messages of Hassan al Banna and fully comprehended them at the very least. Then he said, this is the punchline. He said, 
The truth is that we find complete agreement in the perspectives of these two martyrs, Hassan al-Banna and Sayyid Qutb. Agreement in diagnosing the ailment and agreement in the remedy. That's what they say. They say, Qutb, Sayyid Qutb is a takfiri, but Hassan al-Banna is not a takfiri. And Sayyid Qutb is the one that brought takfir into... No. Sayyid Qutb is just a branch. It's just a continuation of the teaching of Hassan al-Banna. But Hassan al-Banna was a reformist. He was a politician. And you know, politics and being a leader, he couldn't say everything that he wanted. And I mentioned these things, the references, his statements are there. You can go back to them and refer back to them. I gave you the references. So he did do takfir. And he did have that ideology. But Sayyid Qutb was a writer, a thinker. That guy can't like sugarcoat things. He just came out loud and he just exposed everything. You know, he blew the lid. <laughs> the other guy was like, no, let's just be diplomatic. Let's say things, but that don't, doesn't mean takfir. No, play it safe. Sayyid Qutb came like, what are you, do? what are you doing? Hey, guys, guys, all of you, kuffar, yalla. What are you going to do about it? Started writing, writing, writing. And exposed the, the, the real concept of the Muslim Brotherhood. <clears throat> he said this in, uh, this man, Muhammad Abdul Qadir, said this in Manhaj Al-Taghir. Uh, Manhaj Al-Taghir. Wait, what is, it? What, what is it doing? Yeah. بين الإخوان I think بين حسن البنا وسيد قطب بين ش عند الشهيدين حسن البنا وسيد قطب who was influenced by the Muslim Brotherhood أيمن الظواهري one of the leaders of Al Qaeda biggest takfiri terrorist organization خوارج organization he said Usama bin Laden was very much influenced by the Muslim Brotherhood as a matter of fact many of his concepts and ideas and how he built his personality is from that from Sayyid Qutb and Ikhwan al-Muslimin al-Khomeini Khomeini is also very much influenced by Ikhwan al-Muslimin as a matter of fact they have the Al-Quran translated into Farsi and he have many of his books translated into Farsi and they have even stamps you can find it online stamps you know these uh, letter stamps whatever <clears throat> mail stamps in his face Sayyid Qutb Al-Qaeda all of them Qaeda and any is any group that is takfiri, Daesh, Nusra, Qaeda, Boko Haram, Takfir al Jihad with Takfir, you name it. All of them, all of them came. It was they were child, their children of the mother. The mother is Muslim Brotherhood. It gave birth to all these groups today we are suffering from. Hazb al Tahrir. This is very much active now in uh, in the West, and some of the kids now they're trying to call and make it active and revive it again. Hizb al-Tahrir is a false ideology, also part of takfir, uh, khawarij. Part of it is the khawarij ideology, and it's also influenced by Muslim Brotherhood. And of course, the Sahwa movement in Saudi. Sahwa movement, they call Sahwa means awakening, the awakening movement in Saudi. And that was also influenced and uh, yeah, and he pushed and supported by the Muslim Brotherhood. As I told you, they went into the Gulf. They started teaching into, into schools and all that. They created a whole generation of Ikhwanis. Uh, what's his name? One of the top ones, top dogs of Ikhwan al-Muslimin in Saudi, Salman al-Auda, Hayat al-Qarani, Safar al-Hawali, uh, <coughs> Muhammad al-Arifi, al-Tarifi, all of these. Ikhwanis to the core, to the bone, to the bone. Yeah. وطبعاً, uh, they did what they did, and you know, you know what they did. They tried to yeah, overthrow governments, doing protests in Saudi and all these things. What did we get from Muslim Brotherhood? All this history of Muslim Brotherhood. He called for da'wah, like he said, then he took politics, then khilafah, then and since one 1928 till today. What did we get from them? You tell me. You tell me. This is what we got. We've got division between Muslims. Muslims are divided because of them. No, but the Salafis also... No. No, 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 no. We, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and the scholars, don't divide people like this. We don't divide people like... They have divided them on falsehood. They have divided them on falsehood. The true division is that we divide truth from falsehood. But these people have divided them on things that are good but divided the Muslims from it. Yeah, and in one country, living together, loving one another, they divided them, they made takfir, and they started doing takfir upon one another, like we did, like we saw in, 
in <clears throat> in uh, uh, Egypt, like I mentioned, and in, in the UAE. How they turned the people of the UAE against the government, against the people, against their families. This is the division that is wicked, that is satanic. We suffered from them. What did they give us? What, what else did they give us? What kind of services Muslim Brotherhood give us? They gave us revolutions. The Arab Spring destroyed how many countries today? This is Khilaf. This is how Khilaf is going to be established. You destroy and kill people and destroy their homes and lose the countries. And for what? For nothing. Nothing. It was it was nothing. It was all waste. All waste. Allah al They are the first people who supported the Arab Spring. And we remember this. Yusuf al Qaradawi we said this is Dawa Mubaraka and Wildid Didu is also another Ikhwani. Oh, this is a, this is all a blessed thing and a blessed act, and we support it and we fully will Al Ar'ur, Wildid Didu, Salman al Oda, all of these people from the Sahwa, from all the Ikhwanis, all of them were supporting this Arab Spring and it and all the blood of the Muslims are in their necks. Because they are the ones who influence these poor Muslims into uh, doing these revolutions. And confusions in rulings in Islam till today we suffer from this. People don't know what's halal and haram anymore because of their fake fatwas. Music is halal, mixing is halal, riba is halal. You know this. Even till today, people contact me, and I'm nobody, I'm, but they ask me about these things. They say we are in uh, <clears throat> we are in a non-Muslim country. I want to buy a house, and we want to use riba banks to buy a house. We heard that Yusuf Al Qaradawi said it's fine, so we started buying these houses. Oh, there's not a necessity. Uh, which alim would say that riba in that way is halal? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Buying a house is not a necessity. Live in rent. Live in rent. But we see these rulings everywhere. Hatta the other day, what's his name? Uh, Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa. And this shay, shay yudka, I mean, he's, he's not really. Anyways, uh, what did he say? He said, Yeah, I got a fatwa. I got a fatwa that free mixing is okay when it comes to da'wah in, in, in such a form. He, you know, he did, he had some. Ladies there, hajjabat, but talking about some things, yani, wallahi ta'ib, yani, talking about intimacy and marriage and relationship between man and woman. He said, I got a fatwa from someone. But he wouldn't say what, who. Then his friend, Muhammad Hijab, he exposed him. Because Muhammad Hijab is, perhaps I would say, braver than him. <coughs> he said, well, did you give him the fatwa? Aha. Uh -huh. There you go. There you go. These... These fake fatwas, I don't know where they're getting from, from the Muslim Brotherhood. This is what we got from the Muslim Brotherhood. Tayyib, also, what else? Negligence in Tawheed and Sunnah. People don't care about Tawheed and Sunnah anymore. That's why when we talk about Tawheed, La ilaha illallah, like, whoa, I never heard of this before. What, what, what book is this? Where are you talking from? This is Islam? So, yeah, this is what we all, this is what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to teach. Tawheed and Sunnah. La ilaha illallah, la ma'abuda bihaqqin illallah. Ma hiya. What is the conditions of Tawheed? What is uh, the meaning of Tawheed? What is the three types of Tawheed? Uh, what is Tawheed al-Wajib? Tawheed, tawheed, tawheed al-Mustahab? What is... They don't know these things anymore. Nobody knows them. Why? Because politics, khilafa, politics, khilafa. Ya akhi ya habibi, khalli nas Allah. Let the people worship Allah in the grave. You're not going to be asked about CNN and BBC and Jazeera. You're not a news agent. You'll be asked about who is your Lord who is you? What is your religion? And who is this man that you follow? Man Rabbuk, Ma Dinuk, Man Nabiyuk. Bas. They're not going to ask you about what happened in politics and in Palestine and all that. Wallahi, they will not. So they negligence of Tawheed and Sunnah and the spread of Shirk and Bid'ah. Opposite. Shirk and Bid'ah is everywhere. Every calamity we see, it falls. There is Shirk, there is Bid'ah. There is Shirk, there is Bid'ah. We can, yani, I want to move on. Yani sometimes the ulama, some of the scholars, they tell, tell me, huh, you finished the book of so and so in Aqidah? Yes. Yes, Sheikh, I did. Can I do another? No, I said, no, return back again. Why, Sheikh? Because we need it. People are still, people, shirk is everywhere. What are you going to do? What, whose fault is that? Muslim Brotherhood. If you have dedicated your time to teach people t t Aqidah and Tawheed and Sunnah, we don't have a lot of big mess in the Muslim Ummah, people performing shirk and bid'ah and thinking this is okay. The rise of extremist groups, as I mentioned, Qaeda, Daesh, Hizb al Tahrir, uh, all of these other groups, all of them came from what? From this, the, the teachings of the Muslim Brotherhood. And last but not least, killings, assassinations, loss of homes and countries. All justifiable. They do it for the sake of Allah, killing people, assassinating them. They see it's permissible to assassinate people, by the way. They were caught at the times of Al Malik Farooq. And Jamal Abdul Nasser, they were caught with explosives and guns and weaponry. 
and everything. Does that sound religious to you? That sounds like a syndicate gang. This is mafia. This is like a movie, man. How is that religious? They have weapons, they have everything, and they justify it. They say it's okay to kill. They killed the minister, they killed the officer, they, they killed. It's fine for them to kill anybody. Yeah? So this is what the Muslim Brotherhood has offered as services to the Muslim Ummah. As a matter of fact, to the world. Not only that, and this is a bonus one, the world looks at Islam in a bad way now because of the Muslim Brotherhood. Now I have a beard, now they catch me in the airport. Why? Because of the explosion, because of the takfir, because of the khawarij. They think I'm a khariji too. They don't know. They don't know that I refute them. And I I said this before. I went to the US once and they caught me. They caught me like, who are you? Blah, blah, blah. There's five hours they're interrogating me. And they put me in a cell and I was arrested. Maybe that's why I'm pissed off. That's maybe one of the reasons. Sorry about that if that's not an appropriate word. Maybe that was uh, that's why I was angry. <clears throat> that's why I'm angry. They held me there for five hours. Why? Because of them. Because they have tainted the reputation of the beard of Muslims. Now, everywhere a Muslim goes in these countries, you get searched, you get looked at, you get, you know, they 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 uh, they uh, suspect you. He can, he's gonna, he got a bomb in his shoe. He got a bomb in his beard. He got. A... Uh, what is this? Islam is a peaceful religion. Islam doesn't believe in betrayal and assassinations and all that. But the Muslim Brotherhood has made that part of our religion, unfortunately, in a bad way. And now we are all suffering from this. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What about the good they have done? Faris, why are you always ignoring the good that they have done? Wallah. Awalan, whatever good that they have done is the guidance. The guidance is from Allah. Whatever good is from Allah, not from them. They are sebab. That's number one. Number two, the harm that they have done is much greater. And the good is being covered by the scholars and the students of knowledge. It's as if this is exclusive, like they've, nobody has done good ever in their life, only them. What about the harm that they've done, all these things? And you tell me good? La, la, la. We don't want their good. Uh, I don't want their good. Tell us. Let, let the scholars, we have scholars, we have people of, of knowledge, we have people in doing da'wah, they will do good. They'll take care of things. You know, it's like somebody saying, it's, it's like somebody telling someone that a doctor has cured your flu. Congratulations, the doctor cured your flu. And you wake up in the hospital. You're like, yeah. I don't have the flu anymore. That's great. Yeah, but he actually also amputated your leg. Sorry. But be thankful. He, you know, he cured your flu. Well, where's my leg? No. I don't want to leave the flu. I want my leg. You know what I mean? And I said, Allah, al this is Allah al mustan Faris al Hamadi, who are you, anyways? I mean, what credibility do you have to talk about such a big, pious, and virtuous group like the Muslim Brotherhood? You know, we're not trusting you. No problem. No, don't trust me. I'm nobody, Habib. I'm nobody. I'm just giving you the references and the statements of the Muslim Brotherhood. But let's talk about these beautiful, you know, bless the mountains of Ilm. Sheikh Ben Baz, what did he say about them? He said they are from the 72 sects. They are from the 72 deviant sects. He said that. Sheikh Al Fawzan said they are Khawarij, even worse, in one of his statements. Sheikh Al Albani said they are not from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. They are against the Sunnah. Sheikh Muqbil Wadi, Allah bless him. He said, Al Ikhwan al Muflisun, they are the bankrupt brothers, not Al Muslimun. Al Muflisun, they're bankrupt, are the leaders of evil and deviance. They are the leaders of evil, evil and deviance. Accurate, accurate. Yani subhanallah. <clears throat> like, why do you talk about them? What's going on? Khalas, okay, fine. They're 1928. The guy died. Sayyid Qutb died. Uh, Hassan al Banna died. Yusuf Qaradawi died. Uh, everyone died. Why are you talking about? Let's leave it alone. They're in the grave now. Ah, they're in the grave, but the ideology is still there. Yes. Maybe some of these countries don't have the Muslim Brotherhood sect. That's in the Hizm, the party. But it's here. It's all here. The ideology still lives until this day. The ideology is living and in power and is spreading, especially in the West. And subhanAllah, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed once said that in the government summit. He said extremism will come from, from Europe, from the West. The Islamic extremism will come from there. But when everybody was like, oh, well, he's against Islam. No, he's not against, against Islam. He's against you, the deviants, Muslim brotherhoods. That's what he was talking about, that extremist ideology. This is what he was talking about. And yes, I see it clearly 
in the da'wah, in people. People I meet when they come to the UAE and they talk to me about the Muslim societies in the in 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 the West, they say it's a bloody mess. It's a mess. I I've never heard in my life. I've never heard in my life that there's a masjid that has a aqidah, a manhaj. How can it's a building, it's a structure? He says, people contact me today from from the UK. Uh, where can I find a selfie masjid? Like what? What do you mean a selfie masjid? The masjid doesn't have a manhaj. Masjid is a building you worship Allah in. That's it. Oh, but in the UK we have like every masjid has a manhaj. Like if you if you pray in that you're a brailwi. If you pray in that you're khawar. If you pray in that you're a selfie. I'm like, what are you talking about? Doesn't make any sense. No, all the masajids are for Allah. You can pray whenever you want. There's no Salafi masjid. All masjids are for Allah. Bas. They've made that division because of the Muslim Brotherhood. Because of this division. Because what? They give they 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 give money. This is part of philanthropy, by the way. By the way, what do the Muslim Brotherhood do in in, the, in Europe now? In the West, generally speaking, the West, <clears throat> they come to a group of you know society, Muslim society in the West. And they don't have Islamic affairs, they don't have a Muslim ruler, so nobody's gonna pay for their mosques, the centers, their you know, their Islamic affairs. So they come to them and say, How about we give you some money? Huh? You want that? Oh, Muslims in the West? He says, Yeah, we want some money, and we will build a mosque for you. You want that? Oh, yeah, we want a mosque, and we will build a center for you. You want that? Yes, we want that, and we will print books for you. You want that? Yes, we want that. Good. Okay, so we'll give you all the stuff. And now, we'll keep on giving you money. But don't talk about this, don't talk about that, and praise this, and praise Muslim brother, talk about politics, da-da-da-da-da. And that imam, we're going to appoint him for you. What do you say? Deal. Next thing you know, imam, masjid, do 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 politics, 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 fear, 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 fear. What do you get? Khutbah, khutbah al-Jum'ah, it's, it's a news, news channel. And this country said this, and this ruler said this. Baba, where's Tawheed? ذكر الناس بالسنة ذكر الناس بالتوحيد ذكر الناس بالآخرة والله والله يا people have told me this they live in the west they say our khutbah half an hour just 45 minutes talking about politics 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 what is this nonsense but it's being generating the muslim ideology is expanding in the west because of this is one of the reasons and <clears throat> like I said the sect is clear the sect is where they publicly say we are members. They say that, Adi. And they give the bay'ah to their appointed leader. I have bay'ah with the leader of Ikhwan Muslimin, and that's that. Okay, easy. The ideology is tricky. Badly. They don't have a bay'ah. They say, I'm not an Ikhwan. I'm not Ikhwan Muslimin. No, 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 no. But what's wrong with them? They're good. I mean, they have good, they have bad. It's okay. Like a tarifi when he was asked. Allah. Ajjal. They said, oh, what do you think of the Ikhwan Muslim? Wallahi, they are, you know, a group of Muslims. They have some good things. They have some bad things. They are doing da'wah. Da, 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 da. Kalam Fadi, all this nonsense that I've just shared with you. You, you. you, This is what you dare say this? You have no shame? Alhamdulillah, he's in jail now. But he's also one of them, huh? <clears throat> Ideologically, not sect-wise. And they follow their way of da'wah. Quantity, quantity, quantity. Just gather people. Do debates. Do ma'rifshu, mixing, uh, clickbaits, all this nonsense that you see on, on social media today, this is their way of da'wah. This is the ideology of the Ikhwan al-Muslimin, following their teachers. A lot of them, they say that. My mentor, Wulduddu. My mentor, Qaradawi. My mentor, Talman al-Uda. And the fikr fikr khwani, then you have the ideology of Ikhwan al-Muslimin, whether you like it or not. It's very clear. And why do you have these people as mentors and teachers and people you look up to? <clears throat> also, some of them, they do takfir. I'm Salafi, but uh, Muslim rulers are apostates. Kuffar, Murtaddeen. Mafi Salafi says that. No, no, don't, don't, don't play games. Don't just put a slap a label on your forehead and think that you get away with that. No. We judge you on what you say and what you believe and how you act. And so they do take fear. This is part of the Muslim ideology, Muslim Brotherhood ide Muslim ideology, Muslim Brotherhood ideology. Public criticism of rulers. Some of them, okay, okay, fine, fine. We don't do take fear. But if a ruler does something wrong, I can publicly criticize him. It's part of Islam. You fool. 
this is not how you explain and inter apply this hadith. You don't just take a hadith standalone and just do it like that. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, no knowledge. No knowledge and no manners. But public criticism of rulers. <clears throat> what else do they do? Claim no Muslim state today. Don't you hear that today on social media? Uh, yeah, there are Muslims, societies, but no Muslim state. Sure, yeah, you know Muslim state. What do you mean, no Muslim state? Yeah, any what? What do you try? What are you trying to say, man? Just say it. Be brave and say it. No Muslim state. Yeah, no Muslim, no legitimate Muslim rulers. Ikhwan Muslimin, Ikhwan. This is takfir. All this that I've said applies on you. If you say that, confirming Tawheed al-Hakimiyah. They talk about Tawheed al-Hakimiyah. Sheikh Al-Alama Ibn Uthaymin and many of the ulama, they said Tawheed al-Hakimiyah, bid'ah. Bid'ah, there's, no, there's no such thing as Tawheed al-Hakimiyah. Tawheed al-Hakimiyah is part of Tawheed al-Rububiyah. That Allah is the authority, yes, Allah is the authority. And Allah has revealed his, his message, yes, Allah has revealed. But don't make it a standalone Tawheed and try to focus, this is ilaha ilaha illallah, like Sayyid Qutb, what did he say? What did he, what he said? That this is a false interpretation of Islam and Tawheed. So, if you see any of these, this list, then he has the ideology of Ikhwan al Muslimin. Even part of it, there are levels. Yeah, this is levels. Some people have all this, all of them packaged together. Ah, the Ikhwani Muhtariq. Yeah, and he, to the bone. Well, some people know, not to the bone, to the muscle. He has three, four of it. He has that. Oh, some, yeah, and he, so you know what I mean? So it's levels. And you'll see that today. We have people like that today. They they embrace and adopt some of these thoughts. A message to my dear brothers who are in the da'wah scene. What do you think of them? Daniel Haqiqatju. You got, I forgot his name, Yasser Qadi and Yaqeen Institute. You got uh, Mr. Musulman here, Ahmed Hijab, and of course the da'wah people, uh, Sahwa people from Saudi. Are they influenced by Ikhwan al Muslimin? Are they saying the same thing that the Ikhwan Muslimin are saying? Yes, some of it is. Part of their ideology is. I have to say it. So, uh, what's his name? Yasser Qadi, in a, in a, in a, um, a dialogue, a discussion with, with me and him on uh, Twitter, he said, Salman al Oda is my mentor, and I, you know, I look up to him. Yasser Qaradawi, also Yusuf al Qaradawi, I look up to him. What do you mean? What do you look up to? What? His takfir, his public criticism of rulers, his belief that there is no legitimate rulers, his what exactly? But this is a, a problem. This is a very, very concerning thing. This is a question I raise. Uh, what's his name? Muhammad Hijab and Dani Haqiqaju. Don't have any wala wa bara towards, uh, towards Muftadia. In his own words, Dani Haqiqaju said, What? He said, uh, Yeah, Diobandis are atheries. I'm all the way Diobandi. I'm a fanboy of the, or I'm a fan of Dio Bendis. What? Dio Bendis are atheries. What are you talking about? How can they be? They don't cheat people. No, they're not. Yeah. And his, uh, you know, his very soft and mild and very diplomatic, nice way of dealing with the Twelvers. No, no, this is, this is the Khwani ideology. And his criticism, public criticism of rulers. Ikhwani ideology, Hassan al-Banna, Sayyid Qutb, talking about politics day and night and not talking about Tawheed. I thought you were there. these people are du'at, no? They don't talk about this stuff. Aslan Yasir Qadi makes you, conf confuses you about Tawheed. He says, calling to the graves is not shirk. If you're quiet, better. See how, see, do you know what I mean? Taban Muhammad Hijab doesn't have any problem with uniting with any kind of mubtadi' whatsoever mixing with women uh, here look at him he's doing a, rev a protest with for the Uyghurs and took his shirt off for some reason yeah and he collect collect I just want to get people as much as possible this is my da'wah this is we never talked about tawheed never talked about sunnah never explained that book never Islam is a science, man. Islam is just like any other topic, any other religion, any other uh, any subject, anything you want to learn. You have to get it from the books and learn qawaid and principles and all that. And this nonsense that they're doing, this is the ikhwani way. And of course, all the sahwa people here, Salman al-Oda, Saf al-Hawali, Nasr al-Umar, not Aad al-Qarni, what's his name? I think it's not Aad. Uh, I forgot his name, something al-Qarni. 
all these people they have the same approach it's Allah yeah so in the end just as a wrap up I yani, wanted to show you this video also uh, <clears throat> here Yusuf uh, no, Yusuf uh, Imam al-Albani rahimahullah look how this man is so smart subhanAllah he caught them he caught them in an interview with Nasr al-Umar he was sitting with Nasr al-Umar and Nasr al-Umar is saying Salman al-Uda is not an ikhwani he's not an ikhwani he never said he was an ikhwani then he said okay no problem he's not an ikhwani but his manhaj is ikhwani and look what he says إن كان سلمان المرحوف عنه الآن في هذه كلمة وفي غيرها نقول عنه إنه ليس إخوانيا ونحن صادقون لكن ذلك لا يخرجه عن أن يكون منهجه منهج إخوانيا هنا الحذر الآن أنه هو ليس إخوانيا لكن منهجه منهج إخوان مسلمين سي هي سيد ذا he said, هو منهجه هو ليس من الإخوان but منهجه منهج الإخوان and this is what we're suffering from today like I said or like the picture showed it's wolf in sheep clothes I'm not an إخواني no, 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 no but that was إخوان promoting إخوان teachers إخوان way of thinking is إخوان how he recruits people how he does his da'wah how he's calling to islam how he interprets islam all of this is ikhwani but i'm not ikhwani as they said if it walks like a duck talks like a duck then it's a duck and looks like a duck it's a duck i hope inshallah i didn't say anything that's wrong or anything that yani, goes overboard uh, all the tawfiq is from allah azza wa jal and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make me sincere for everything in anything that I have said and accept what I have said and make it beneficial for you. And I hope you enjoyed it and found it beneficial at the same time.